Hello, uh, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, I'm Osama Nassar, uh, a journalist and activist, uh, her husband. Uh, I know Nabil since he uh, was a kid. Uh, he used to be one of uh, my friend's students. Uh, and uh, since then he was like, uh, this is back uh, uh, 1990 something, uh, since he was, then he was like uh, uh, initiative, ha has some initiatives, he comes and introduces himself to everybody, he says I'm Nabil, I know you, I uh, read some of your uh, articles, for example. I am. I admire something you do. I disadmire something you do also. Uh, uh, later on, when uh, uh, he started his university uh, study, uh, first he didn't study journalism. Actually, he studied uh, farming engineering. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, afterward he like fo followed his passion to uh, join the uh, media uh, media uh, college of uh, Damascus he graduated uh, as a journalist uh, I guess like 2006 or 7 uh, he graduated so I know him since then as a student of my friend, consequently a student of mine, uh, then he, he uh, I mean soon he be became like a friend and a very close friend. Maybe one of the aspects is that he was in our, in my neighborhood in the same LA that we uh, lived. Uh, so I, I used to see him uh, when he used to go and come back to his home. Uh, and we share the same uh, interests in, uh, you know, in activism and journalism. We have heard um, today, and I was hoping, uh, Mr. Nasser, to, to ask you this question about the option for non-violence resistance. Uh, and we've, we've heard about this in... in this will show my ignorance, but it, it, it is. It was a response. Or this presumes there was a response in resistance. They will be violent, and they will consider violence. Will you just explain more? I know there was also part of your interest that option and the conversations that you have with Nabil and why he opted for that route. I see. I, I I've noticed that there is this uh, uh, misunderstanding in the in this court between the activism and journalism. For us in Syria, it's very hard to differentiate between these two very separate fields in usual life, in the world. But in Syria, it's very, uh, when you are in, on journalism, you definitely, either part of the regime propaganda, you copy the regime of propaganda, repeat after the, what, what they say, or you are an activism. You are in, on activism. You cannot uh, work in journalism. Uh, may, maybe yesterday, uh, one of uh, the witnesses said that uh, you can talk about, like, uh, whatever, about the art, about some other stuff, rather than policies and maybe, uh, uh, you know, to go in policy. But even this space is not allowed in Syria. We're not allowed and is not allowed now. The, uh, the, the regime used to have, we ha used to have only three papers. One of them called al Pas paper. This is the, part, the, re the leading, leading party in Syria. It named after the, 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 the Pas party. The other is al Sawra, which is the revolution also mentions al Pas revolution, the, the COP in 1963. And the third one is Tishreen, is the, the battle that Hafez al-Assad has made in order to liberate our lands. And nothing was liberated, by the way. 
So, so if you are, sorry, go ahead, continue, please. So everything is about the regime propaganda. We don't have this uh, luxury of having journalism as a job, as a profession. Okay, I am a journalist, I work in journalism, I have this immunity of not being, of asking questions and stuff. No, not in Syria. When you are a journalist, you definitely is a activist. Even if you want to talk about art or about some, you know, fine things. And to attach it to the violence consideration, so then this, is this, right. is, this encounters uh, violence from the regime and his answer with violence. Is that where the, well, well traditionally, that was the, the answer. Exactly. This is why, uh, for example, Nabil uh, took his choice to, to be a journalist. So he is an activist, but he stick to nonviolent. He is a nonviolent activist, not any kind of activist. He didn't um, wish to have this uh, coup or to, to just uh, kill the regime and replace it. We, our guy will be there. No, the change for Nabil is a peaceful change, even before the peace for revolution has started in 2011. He, as maybe m my friend Osama has mentioned, he was after, uh, he was following the nonviolent uh, uh, scholars like Gandhi, uh, Nelson Mandela, and maybe Abdul Ghaffar Khan and other uh, uh, scholars of nonviolent. And he even attended some a tra train and training about nonviolent non change, uh, 2008 or 9. Was that a popular approach amongst the, the youth and the groups in Daraya and beyond? Maybe in Daraya, yes, it was popular because, as my friends had have just mentioned, we were, were we were like a group of people who are approaching nonviolence. Uh, doing non-violent activism here and there since maybe uh, late uh, 90s. Later in 2000, uh, uh, 2002, we uh, organized the first uh, non-licensed uh, demonstration in, in the town since maybe uh, 1950. In 2003, also, we or, again we organized like a project of four uh, activities, including uh, a demonstration, peaceful demonstration. Uh, this was, you know, to uh, uh, against the uh, invading of Iraq, 2003. Uh, uh, one was cleaning streets, which is also like uh, the Daria group known to have this uh, uh, act, kind of activity, we clean streets. We are very proud that we clean our own streets. And by the way, this is why we got arrested a couple of weeks later. To, uh, these activities were in the spring of 2003, uh, around the invading of Iraq. To, uh, in May this month, 2003, we got arrested more than 20 people, 24 people, including uh, questioning our friends who were not, we, I mean, kind of lucky they didn't uh, uh, get arrested. And there were torture, there was torture, there was ill treatment, all the package at that days of the regime, because some people clean their own neighborhoods because some people demand that we, okay, we don't, uh, we don't pay bribery. We didn't ask anybody not to receive bribery, bribery because, you know, this is the regime. But we ask, we, we say that we don't pay bribery and we ask people not to pay bribery. So there were these four activities, and we got arrested for that. And we got, you know, we, we got labeled of that for the rest of our life, you know. Later on, there were uh, uh, 
military field, military field court uh, for some of us. Uh, some of us were banned. Of there is, was travel ban for us, and you know we, we even if, when we got released, we were we were asked to. Uh, I mean, we were questioning every now and then from the by the uh, security branches. I mean, we presume that you were, as a group and individually, very active between that first arrest that we have identified in 2003 and the uprising and the bigger movement in 2011. Could you describe those years? We're talking about seven. My math is probably bad, but I mean seven years. And what was happening and how it was evolving towards 2011? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Uh, for, for us, we, we we were about this, you know. We 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 started to uh, be known after we got arrested by the uh, other activities activists in in Syria, especially in Damascus. So we we started to have this connection between and this communication. Sorry, uh, start to have this communications between other activists. Just gives us one minute until we figure it out. Sorry. Continue, please. Uh, uh, maybe a couple of uh, months after, before the Arab Spring, uh, we started to have these uh, discussions between some of our friends in Daraya and some other friends in uh, Attel, which is another uh, neighborhood, for, um, another Damascus suburb, uh, we start to, you know, to talk about changes, about how things will be, will go in Syria. Uh, but re soon after the Arab Spring uh, started in Tunisia and other uh, countries, we uh, start to ask this question: Okay, is Will will it be there in in Syria? Are we going to have a revolution in Syria? After many sessions, you know, after many uh, uh, discussions, we uh, arrived this uh, conclusion. I mean, our group that it's very not it's, it's not a very good idea to have a revolution so soon in Syria, but when the revolution will be there, and it will be there. We know where, where, where to, which side we will take. You know, we will stick to the revolution, of course. Thank you. Miss Alaman, hi. Sorry, I did not address you. Could you describe your relationship, how you met Nabil, and what kind of work were you guys doing? And welcome. Um, my name is Maimoun Alamar. Um, I'm a violence activist and a human rights defender. Uh, with more than eight years' experience in social work as a founding and key field member of the uh, leading child protection NGO in Syria's Horas Network, uh, I co-founded um, with other friends the Civic Action Organization Syrian and Violence Movement uh, in April 2011 and took the lead in many of its activities. Um, uh, its focus was on uh, organizing protests and um, uh, strikes, uh, as well as peaceful uh, dile dilemma actions. Uh, having uh, my only two brothers uh, as forcibly disappeared since 2012, I'm a board member of the Families for Freedom Movement, which advocates for the rights of uh, the forcibly disappeared people in Syria. Um, I'm a friend of Nabil. I can say um, what brought me together with Nabil was love, first of all. He was one of the best friends of the love of my life, Osama, and thus Nabil was one of my closest friends as well. I, I met him in September 2008, six months before me and Osama's marriage. Um, I was in my graduation year as I uh, studied computer in, uh, networks uh, and automation at the University of Damascus. And he, Nabil, told me in our first conversation that he was in his third year studying media at the same university after he already graduated from Agriculture Institute. 
We were in the month of Ramadan, and in addition to his study, he told me he was working in carpenting. Nabil was always a hard worker. Our relationship has uh, developed since then. After my marriage, I moved and movement to live in Daraya city. He used to visit us uh, in our home there. Uh, we often went out together and have gatherings uh, also as a group of a part uh, uh, or a part of a larger group of friends in the city. Um, I was almost a, on a daily contact with Nabil during that period. Uh, Nabil developed a profession in journalism uh, through his academic study and through professional trainings by the Institute of War and Peace Reporting. I remember when he shared with me one of his first impressive works from 2010, a film that was reporting on a youth initiative uh, of a cleaning campaign for Barada River. Actively, he was uh, actually he was a member of the initiative uh, group himself. He documented the work by filming and publishing on his blog, which was active since before, and through which uh, he shared our concerns, our common concerns about oppression, corruption, and social change. I realized early that what brought me together with Nabil was much more the sense of valuing and respect to genuine dignity of humankind and the opposition to all types of dehumanization practices, whether they were practiced by dominant authorities or historically emerged in social norms. Um, with the beginning of the uprising in the Arab world, starting from Tunisia, me and Nabil were highly immersed in following up uh, on what was going uh, and attended several gatherings of Syrian youth from all over uh, around Damascus uh, who have common concerns in public affairs and great desires to enact social change. With the escalation of violence in Libya and uh, atrocities against civilians, Nabil, uh, Osama and others, I think Hanan also was there, participated in a stand in solidarity in front of the Libyan embassy in Damascus in February 2011 and were faced by security members with truncheons and gas bombs, as well as cursing and swearing with the word, worst words you would ever hear in your life. Was this the, sorry to interrupt, was this the sit-in that took place in March 2011? Yeah, I will come into this. Uh, this this happened, no, before March. I see. This was Perfect. in February. Okay. Yeah, I, I was also, I was also eager, so, so eager to be with them at that time but uh, as we were living with my mother-in-law and uh, the fact that I was pregnant at that time she was highly conservative on my uh, participation and I didn't want to upset her but weeks later on the 15th of March it was the zero hour let's say in Syria hundreds of Syrians were down the street in Harika area in Damascus, chanting for freedom. The first screams were asking for dignity. Syrian people are not to be humiliated. Shab Suri Mabinzel. Next day, the 16th of March, I was lucky not to have my mother-in-law uh, at home. And I joined people in the street for the first time. The standing in front of the Ministry of Interior in solidarity with prisoners of conscience was planned weeks ahead. Uh, we met at Dare's bus station, me, Usama, Hanan, Nabil, and our passing away friend, Muhammad Matar. We reached uh, Al Merja Square and met there with other friends after arrangement. Security members were beating protesters up and putting them down to ground and dragging them to near shops, preparing to arrest them. We tried to let some friends free. Moments later, we were just standing before one of the security members came from behind Nabil. He grabbed his hands uh, to his back. What was the role, sorry to interrupt, right? what was the role that you, your group, and Nabil in particular, was playing at the sit-ins? 
Sorry. What was the role? The role that the, your group of friends and colleagues and Nabil in particular were playing during the sittings. Yeah, we we were just participating, standing with other people, and also I th I believe that Nabil uh, already uh, was in the groups uh, who made arrangements for the sitting uh, weeks ahead. Uh, but I, um, for me, I uh, I knew about the standing, um, like um, uh, through like media, but you know, secret media, and um, because of the presence of my mother-in-law, I thought maybe I wouldn't be able to go. But I was lucky that day; she wasn't at home. So, um, in the arrest of Nabil, what happened later? Um, this uh, security member he grabbed Nabil's hands to his back and uh, he tied them and pushed pushed him to walk in front of him. Our other friend said, "What he has he done? If he did something wrong, I want to be tied in with him." So we we all said, all of us were with him, and we all uh, walked in uh, to where they were uh, taking Nabil. It was a barber shop. They called for a vehicle. Um, which took us to the security branch known as the region branch or branch number 227. Uh, um, arrested males and females were separated. Uh, we were all searched, um, registered and investigated individual, individually. Uh, all those security officers uh, threatened me and verbally humiliated me. I wasn't beaten. However, I knew that Nabil was beaten and tortured in that occasion. Let me just stop you for a minute, because I believe Mr. Nassar was arrested with Nabil yeah, on yeah. that occasion. Do you mind relating what was um, what happened at the arrest and after the arrest? Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, uh, March 16, uh, 2011, uh, th there was this uh, uh, call for a sit in, in in front of the Ministry of Interior uh, in competition with the uh, prisoner of conscience uh, who were uh, who went, went previously who were in, on hunger strike uh, so uh, the families of uh, these prisoners of conscience uh, call for this sit in uh, so uh, this is like uh, 10 days before the, the, the date, 10 days before six, uh, March 16th. Uh, so we uh, have this uh, appointment to gather, to, to, to be together and, as a group and join the sit-in. Uh, at midday, uh, we went there, uh, m my wife, my friends and uh, myself, uh, one of our friends, who was uh, Yahya Shurbaji, uh, who, who was there before us, uh, he called me like uh, 50 minutes before uh, we arrived there. He said uh, uh, the, the some security security men came and. Uh, took my camera, and maybe I will be arrested right now. They took his camera. They saw him filming what's going on. Because, uh, in fact, the, 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 the clash started even before the, t the time of the sit-in. Uh, uh, the, the supposed time is 12 midday, but like 11 something, 11.30, when the, sec the security were there. By the way, they were there even uh, one day before. I mean, the, 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 the secu security people, the Shabiha and everybody, they were there. As Maimuna has just mentioned, in March 15th, there, there was this uh, uh, demonstration, the famous, famous demonstration of al Hamidiyah in Damascus which considered to be the, the, the trigger of the revolution. Uh, Nabil and I, in 
March 15, we were in, visiting a friend uh, near Daria. Uh, to be honest, we didn't believe that there will be a revolution so soon, because there was this call of gathering and demonstrating on March 15. I, I thought, maybe we thought, that there will, not, there will be nothing, because there was a call in February the 4th, February the 5th, uh, for a day of rage or something in Syria, and nobody shows up. I thought that on March 15th also there will be no nobody. But surprisingly, Maimuna called and she said, okay, it started. <coughs> she uh, is on the internet. I was in the street with Nabil. She uh, put her cell phone in front of the laptop to then I overheard the chants of the people of the, of the demonstration in Al Hamidiyah. They say, uh, one of their chants is, uh, all Syrians, where are you? Wena ki asuri wena. We felt something very different, very new, that Okay, we are Syrians, and we are not there in the, in the demonstrations. So we decided, Nabil and I, we decided we need to join this demonstration so soon. So we run that there. We, we reach al Hamidiyas, you know, al Hamidiyah, Souq al Hamidiyah, the very famous and old, old ancient uh, Souq in Damascus, in the middle of Damascus. And there were, there were nobody except al mukhabarat people. All the shopkeepers were just astonished. It's the most crowded place maybe in Syria. But you know, everybody just f as if it's freezing, just astonishing and looking for each other, looking at each other. And of course, al mukhabarat were just have this different look. You know that, the, okay, this is a normal people and they, that is somebody else. We reach Umayyad Mosque because the call of this, the, this is the first YouTube called for another gathering in Umayyad Mosque, which is at, at the end of this souq, al Hamidiyah souq. So we reached this mosque. Also, there, there were nobody but this Shabiha and other scared people like ourselves. So, okay, the demonstration is off. No demonstration for today for us. So we went back home. On our way back, we said, okay, let's say where we are going to gather next morning, you know, because this is March 15. And the interior, Ministry of Interior set in is the next day, the very next day. So we went there, because it's an, on our way home, to uh, Al Marja Square, Sahit Al Marja. It's the very normal uh, movement in the street, except there were, there, there were like three or four buses, very big buses with soldiers in just ready to, to fight us on the next day. So when we show, showed up the next day, they were, they were there before and ready to have this battle. I don't know how they charged them. I mean, morally charged them, okay? Some traitors are going to be there tomorrow you, and you are in charge of cracking them down. And this is actually what happened. So on March 16th, Yahya called. He said, OK, I'm mostly I'm arrested, but I just have my mobile so far. You will lose me very soon. I called 
My other friend, Razan, was also one of the organizers. Uh, I told her, where are you? She said, oh, come over. We are here already. And I also s started to, again, hear the chant by the phone. Uh, so when we reached the, the square, we didn't reach the, the place of gathering yet, but we, we uh, on the other side of the square, there was a demonstration by uh, regime's fans, and they were chanting for Bashar al-Assad. And the other people, on the other hand, they, I mean, on the other side of the square, also gathered and start to chant. These chant, Allah, Surya, Hurriye, Allah, God, Syria, freedom. And those people start, Allah, Surya, Bashar, Ubas. God, Syria, Bashar, and that's it. And they started to crack down this revolution. They started uh, this demonstration. They start to arrest everybody and just Sahel. Just uh, very harshly, very violently dealing with people and arresting them, hitting them, including one of my friends. I did, didn't know her at that time. She is such a nice young woman. And she were hitting by them, by like seven or ten uh, young men. We started, we tried to uh, take her out, but they, anyway, took her. They took another friend of us. Uh, she was with us. Uh, we tried to in, draw her to, towards, in order to just flee. So. The, the men said, OK, is, is she her sister? I said, yes, she is. He said, took her and just go away. So we are flying. In, at that very moment, Nabil, who's, who was just in front of me, he said, OK, I, I heard him calling Osama. They are taking me. <coughs> Maimuna held his hand and tried to draw him toward us. They draw on the other side. They were, of course, more. So uh, I hold Maimuna's hand. So she was the connection between two of us. So she said, if you are going to take him, I'm going with him. They said, no, you just leave. She refused. Then they asked me to leave. I told him, OK, this is, she's my wife. Again, they asked her, OK, take your, your bloody husband and go away. She said, no, bring Nabil with us. She refused. I refused. So we all went together in that bloody barber shop. And Later on, other uh, friends joined us in that uh, shop. Later, we were put in a van, the civilian van, and we were taken to Far uh, al-Mantiqa uh, 227. I know this branch before. Uh, Osama and I got, got arrested in in the same in the very same branch like eight years ago. When you went there after eight years, I mean when you went down seemingly, you know, under the ground. There there is a tunnel. You go through a tunnel in order to reach to reach the cells. So when you go through that route again after eight years, I felt like the time never passed here. 
as if we are again 2003 for us. The same paint, the same posters of Basil al-Assad, who's the Bashar al-Assad's brother, eldest brother, who, who was supposed to be our president, but he passed before. With his, you know, horse, the same Hafiz al-Assad posters. This, they're very same. I mean, they never replace them. They are there on the, just getting a little turn out. So we went there to the cells. Uh, for the beginning, the, I shared the, this, the same cell with Nabil and with other two friends. Actually, with one friend and other uh, newly friend. I didn't know uh, to, for that moment. And later, after like one hour, they just uh, separate us every two people in one cell. Of course, they in the very beginning, they separate us women from, you know, male and female, all, uh, everybody aside. What else? And after that, what, how long did you stay in prison we in that occasion? The, we spent the night there. Uh, the, the next day, uh, they took us to the and to question to be questioned uh, the the very next day at the evening i mean maybe uh, march 17th we were uh, taken to the court and there uh, it was different for us you know because i i, I was arrested like three times before the, this time all for cleaning streets and such stuff. We never go to jail like any other people. So all the time I, I was arrested and, and released from the security branches. So when we were transformed to the, to the court for the first time in my life, so this is a different experience because the, the policemen who belongs to the who belong to the court are very different people. They are just normal people, just officers doing their jobs. Very different from Al Muhabarat people. So there there was this shift between the two worlds. Uh, so now we are we are not blindfolded. We can look at what, wh whoever talks to us, we can, we, we receive a f food, we receive, you know, we, we talk to, to, to us, they call our names and so on. So Nabil and I and other 30, by the way, this is the, the Mahbar, the report of the court, the, 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 the first judge who uh, questioned us on that night. By the way, it was night. It was like 10 p.m. Could you describe a little bit for the panel the um, the framing of frame the court? There was a judge. There were lawyers. What kind of a scenario was there? <coughs> and the 10 p.m. The time is. It is. It is like 9 p.m. We we queued for waiting for uh, for uh, the court. I mean for the judge. Uh, we've told that usually there, there, there is no judges after noon, after like 2 or 3 uh, p.m. But so we, we were, we thought that, okay, we will spend the night here. But like 9 p.m., uh, they started to take us two by two, every two people together to the uh, judge who was like upstairs in uh, Damascus uh, Justice Palace. So uh, we were and also I, I, I was surprised that uh, there, there were some lawyers 
friends of us, uh, including Razan Zaytuna and maybe other uh, friends. Uh, Razan, she was one of our friends, of course, and she was one of the organizers of the interior sit-in. She didn't get arrested, but she showed up the next day as a lawyer with like, I don't know how many, but like five or six other lawyers. Did you inquire, sorry, just to stop you there, did you inquire with her how she was contacted, how she came about to be your lawyer? Of course, she, 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 uh, she f followed, uh, followed the, uh, us like uh, where, we, where, where we were taken. By the way, she followed uh, every single de detainees, even before the revolution. She, this is what she, she does. She documented every single uh, prisoner of conscience in Syria since maybe like 1990-something. Or So uh, uh, they followed us. Uh, they uh, knew for some, somehow, they knew that, okay, we were transferred to the court. They spent the day waiting for us to show up in front of this judge in order to be questioned. At night, like 10 p.m., uh, my turn came, and uh, uh, there was another guy with me. I didn't know him before. One of those lists, one of those people. They are 32 people, all men and women. And the charge is So attempt to the privilege and the honor of the state. So an attempt to the honor of the state. Could you say it again so that we can get the translation? Yeah. An attack against the honor of the state. So the defendants protested before the Ministry of Interiors on 16-3-2011 in order to change the uh, form of the government and change uh, the social uh, form and to incite for strife uh, between the components of our state. Uh, 200, 200, uh, 285 and 307. We were charged of these these articles again. Uh, uh, the violation was uh, protesting without a license and attacking or the uh, honor of the state and uh, impeding uh, the nationalistic feeling and uh, inciting strife or um, uh, creating chaos in the nation. Funny, no? What happened after these charges were presented? Before that, you? sorry, before that, Maimuna is here. Before that, they uh, asked me to attend, I mean in the branch, in the security branch, 227. They uh, uh, called me, like, also, I don't know how, what, what was the time, like midnight. They called me, and uh, I saw Maimuna again. And the officer allowed me to hug her. Uh, slightly, because he also prevented me to, to get a real hug. And he said, okay, why are you, I, I, I'll not ask you, why are you here? I'll not ask you about the organization, the deep organization and the, the fund that you got. Of course, we, we never had funds to, to demonstrate or 
do stuff. But I'm going to ask you one question. Why did you bring such a brilliant woman to such a fight? <clears throat> and I told him, we, are, we were not there to fight. And I, didn't, I br brought nobody. She comes by herself. He asked her, is that true? She said, of course. I brought him. <laughs> Again, he said, who brought who? Uh, I told him, OK, I was putting on my clothes. She said, well, I want to join you. I said, you are, you are welcome. Join. So we, we were there. So the other guy, the, the other officer, sarcastically said, so you have democracy at home. Then I told him, OK, if we don't have democracy at home, we will never demand democracy at streets. And then he st stopped joking. He said, OK, only because we are human, because we are very nice to you, we will bypass your crime, your mistake. You do mistakes. You are like our children. And we are to release your life, your, your, your wife, for now. Because the Seattle the, 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 the very big general at the home, at the, at the branch, suggested that, OK, you just release the pregnant, the pregnant woman. So he asked uh, some guy to, uh, he said, OK, now you will witness her just leaving home. And also, uh, she was accompanied by a very, he, he raised the phone, he uh, ordered a taxi with a very nice and respectful guy. Again, he stressed, send me a very nice and respectful guy. And a guy showed up. I asked him, you please let her go alone. <laughs> I, don't go, I don't want her to go with this nice guy. Anyway, she left. And next day, we, we, we were at court. And the next day, you were all freed. And did they? No, no. We, we were detained for the, the, this uh, nice judge uh, sentence. I don't know his sentence, but sent us to the prison, Adra prison, the central prison. And there we were received by our uh, prisoner of conscience. Some of them were friends who were. Who, who we were, we were supposed to to do this sit sit in for their sake, so we joined them. Now we were all now prisoners of conscience, and also we joined their hunger strike. We went on hunger strike with them. How long were you stay in the prison? At we that stayed. Time? To the, to, we stayed this. Uh, uh, by the end of the march, we we were released because of this amnesty. Because while we were on, in prison, uh, there was an amnesty. And they released us. And they, they promised that, OK, everything will be OK. By the way, the, the paper, the three papers that, that I have just mentioned, the, the next day, uh, the, the next day headlines where Mundasun? Mundasun. We are the Mundasun. They are the uh, uh, people who were incited or pushed to uh, interfere. So they, they describe us. Thank you. They describe us like intruders. Like infiltrators or intruders. The demonstration that chanted for Bashar al-Assad that the welfare that we are, we, we live in Syria. And some 
intruders showed up and damaged that harmony. Were you with Nabil in, during that period at all times? And this next question is, were you mistreated or tortured during that time in March in jail? It depends how you define the mistreatment and torture. We were, mis we were mistre mistreated, yes. And there, wa there was some torture. But I know it's not relatively it's not something to be to take to be taken in relative to anything but in relative to what happened next that was nothing it was like a picnic we showed up we we, we were released after two weeks walking but yes we we were put in cells in very dim very dark places uh, at night they uh, they took a couple of us, not all of us. Uh, they hit, I mean, start to hit some of us uh, in the near the cells, and we we were hearing how they, you know, screamed and shout. And this is a question, like I guess, for both of you between that arrest and. In the second and last arrest of Nabil in 2012, how did you uh, describe uh, the the activities, the work, the engagement, the the intensity? You know, you can describe that period. Perhaps Miss Halaman, you wanna? Yeah. Thank you, Sama, for describing the incidents in detail. Actually, I didn't go to details because I felt that there is no time for details. Um, just I want to like um, ex express um, or describe a glance of our arrest, arrest that, that uh, Wednesday, the 16th of March, that when they brought Osama, uh, no, uh, you know, the, 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 the manager or the, the senior officer of that security branch was uh, from the same province, the Dara, which I'm originally from. It was just an accident and um, and he, it was only, you know, we were so lucky as a summer, it was like a picnic. It was only the, the first, the second day in the uprising and, um, and they tried, you know, they wanted to absorb the, the, the aggressive or the anger of people they wanted to to calm people down even they were cruel at streets but they were very like they treated us in a very different way inside the branch i mean at least for me as a you know the the female group of us or at least for me um but i know that other male um detained people and, and the same group were were hit and were hit and were hit and were beaten and tortured. Uh, but it was like you know, s s relatively um, in a less amount, relatively with with what happened later in the revolution, in the uprising. So when they brought Osama to um, no, when they they called me to that as senior manager of the branch. Uh, to his office twice, and the, the, the first time he told me that uh, I don't think you did this in purpose. Your he tried to express his sorrow because I was involved in such you know um, event. And in the second time, after that, I I was down again because he you go from the entrance of the you know the office's room and the jails to the another in, entrance beside and there's the red carpets and the stair you go to a wide office very wide office all of you know wood and he was sitting there and yeah when i uh, when i was brought down after uh, i met him the first uh, the first time they 
they told me, what will you, what will you say when you go out? Will you say that we brought you water to drink? We let you uh, wash your face. We uh, let you pray. I told them, okay, yeah, I will tell people that, but also I will tell how you treated people very cruelly. You dragged people on the ground. You beaten people. You blooded people. And they wanted to threaten me, to scare me. They, uh, the senior manager called me again. And this time he was also showing, um, like, upmasking or uncovering the mask of her, like his face and showing, uh, now speaking in, in, in a threatening language. He, he, he um, pretend to talk to somebody on the phone and uh, um, who is on, on uh, um, Duma's prison, uh, Duma's uh, woman prison. And he said he was asking him if he has a a place in him there there is a lady they want to, to to send that lady to their branch and then he turned to me and said in a very like you know like bossy way you thought that we don't send we don't jail women we don't jail pregnant women of course we can take you to Duma prison a woman there will take care of you you can give birth there and then he like saying dozens of you know um swearing and cursing words that i i really i don't like i know they were like humiliating me but i really don't uh remember them literally but everybody in syria can can guess what uh what are these words were so and when they when they asked for Osama to to see me before I I when they decided to release me, I was sho shocked to see him when he came. He was barefooted. It was a shock for me because you know, it was you know the ground was too cold. He was without his jacket. He wasn't wearing his glasses. The I didn't imagine that he would show up in this situation <laughs> and he was uh, like um you know putting his when he came into the room uh he he like he, he um, wiped his his uh, eyes as if he it's obvious that he was in a place where he uh, in a dark place blindfolded yeah um yeah that was heartbreaking for me and um after that evening they um they took you know i was uh, released uh, the same day in the evening and uh but usama and the others were transferred to adra prison i had a call from razan when it was 9 p.m when she told me that we are at the court and they were um, transferred to Adra prison, and they were uh, they went there, uh, Nabil, Osama, and uh, other friends, into hunger strike until they were released after two weeks. By that time, the demonstrations were already launched in my origin province, Tara, along with other areas uh, and and around Damascus, Homs, and in many provinces that followed. Uh, peaceful protests were faced in these later occasions with gunfire. Dozens were arrested. Dara city was bombed by tanks of the Syrian army. Systematic arrest campaigns were breaking demonstrating cities. One of the first was in the city of Daraya, where I was living. In dawn of the 1st of May, 2011, our house was raided and the whole building was bounded by tens of soldiers and security forces, uh, force members, just in seek for Osama. Nabil didn't let an effort to spread the word on that 
uh, on what was happening in Dari City. He had already started a work to document arbitrary arrest cases committed in the city. And I joined his work after Osama was arrested that day. I followed uh, up arrest cases, documented precise details, interviewed eyewitnesses, family members of detained people, and recent, recently released detainees. The first month of the uprising also overlapped several accidents of arrest of my two brothers, my father, and many relatives of mine. Moreover, I lived through the pain of losing my husband while going through the pain of giving birth for our first child. He was released when our daughter was 17 days old. However, I, I didn't make, it didn't make no difference for me to, uh, for my enthusiasm to document violations to continue documenting, which, which had been taking place on a daily basis. I was working from behind the screen of my desktop and uh, to be able to do that without any social barriers related to being a woman, I had to create another account with a male nickname. This virtual personality was first well known to almost every single young person who was involved in the uprising in Daraya. He was respected and highly admired because the hard efforts he put day and night and the way he communicated respectfully, professionally and empathically with people belonging to all different parties in the city. I also was in continued contact with, the Syrian, with Syrian lawyers to follow up cases of people who are imprisoned. I communicated documentation to international human rights organizations like Amnesty International and Human Rights Watch. Mm. Um, I worked, uh, work developed later included keeping records of killed and missing persons. And this, you know, after the arrest of Nabil, this happened, the, the massacre, the massacre of, of, of Daraya in August 2012. I documented every single, you know, but, Ms. Aleman, what, yeah, what happened to all this yeah. doc, this, what happened to all of these collections and all of these documents have been have you stored them and there's any use have been done to them the, the, document, the documentation became a credible source for local and international organizations such as violations documentation center in Syria we were in a, like continual continuous cooperation with them and they accredited our work uh, in their in their uh, documentations also. Um, my house in Daraya was broken again by security forces seeking for Osama in November 2011. I was alone with my five months baby. They arrested uh, my brother at the checkpoint and forced him to lead them to my home. In, the, in that incident, they threatened to kidnap my baby if my husband didn't uh, hand himself to them. After arguing with them, they decided to leave me. They took my brother and swear to turn him back a dead body. I left my house immediately after that, and I felt now, as I felt now, wanted. I joined Osama, hiding in Damascus. We moved to a new place each time one of our friends who knew our place was arrested. Nabil uh, came to visit us several times. Uh, last time was in late 2011. He told me, Maymuna, we will start a newspaper. Would you like to join us? I told him I barely uh, was able to catch up for the work on uh, documentation day and night. He laughed. We both laughed. That was the last time I saw him. The work of documentation was growing and developing. Even Nabil was less involved uh, in it by time, as he was taking on his shoulders uh, other huge responsibilities. Thank, thank you. Uh, I, I helped Nabil in preparing the arrest uh, update section in the Anna Paladin newspaper. 
However, after only seven months of our documentation work started, Nabil was arrested on the 26th of February, 2012. He was uh, in one of his visits to Daraya city, although he was forced to go into hiding since his last release, along with Yahya, Osama, Riyadh, Motar, and others of our friends. And despite the fact that he was doing a huge effort through managing the media section in Daraya's local coordination committee, he was still persistent to meet other activists in person and smuggled himself frequently to visit the city. I was in a daily contact with him till that day when we were about to start our daily wrap-up conversation. I told him I need to change my place and I will come back to him. But I, I never come back due to the fact that Nabil was not there waiting for me anymore. He got arrested afternoon that day. Thank you. I don't have any more questions. Mr. Nassar, do you want to add anything else? Yes, I, I, I just please, I want to add, why, why did Nabil come back to Daria? We were relatively safe after we, we put this strategy that every time somebody got arrested, we move somewhere else. <clears throat> after the arresting of uh, our friends Yahya, Shurbaji, and uh, Ghiyas Matar, and other <coughs> friends, uh, we felt more threat. We moved to a new uh, safe place. Uh, but all of a sudden, Nabil decided to go back to Daria. I ha had this discussion with him. Okay, why are you going back? We are doing good here. We work, we visit Daria every now and then, and uh, things are going anyway. He said, people start to fight back. We have a job to do there. He said, I know we are doing our jobs. We are just talking to our friends that, okay, you, you don't suppose to, you are not supposed to fight back. We became, we started as peaceful revolution and we will maintain this peaceful revolution. He went there anyway. He said, it's, it's only a couple of days. I will go there, fix some stuff and go back to this safe place. And every time I called him and asked him to come back uh, to Damascus, you know, because the area was under very heavy uh, monitoring by the security branches. So he he's refused. He said, OK, I'm just going to talk to some people, to some friends of mine, in order to do something about this you know, this uh, violence from our side, from the revolution side. And once, uh, it, it took like more than one month from him and he never come back. Once I called him, okay, Nabil, you are just deceiving me. Are you coming back or not? He said, people are Syrian people are killing each other now. Darayan people, people from our hometown, start to killing each other now. As far as those people is killing each other, I have something to do with them. And I'll stay with them to do something. He literally quoted Al Mahatma Gandhi, literally and spontaneously, by the way. He said, I have to do what I have to do. And then, you know, that day that Yasser had just described came. Thank you very much, uh, both Mr. Nassar, Ms. Salaman. I don't have any more questions. I don't know if the panel has any questions. 
Yes. Hello. Yes, Gil. Hello. I think I think we have a Gil from Australia, but we don't see him. Oh, here he's coming now. <laughs> um, to my friends, the the witnesses, um, thank you both very much for such an amazing journey, which you have described to us. And in particular, I'm interested in the psychology of repression, which you've demonstrated very, or illustrated very well. I have the greatest respect for the principled and ethical nature of the movement in which Nabil, you and others confronted the regime. But I, I do have a comment and then a question on the issue of nonviolence. I think it's important to discuss this. You mentioned the nonviolence of Mandela and Gandhi and others. Regarding Mandela, there were actually two Mandelas, and I imagine you, you're aware of this, but he was the leader of the armed struggle for many years. He was also a prisoner and negotiator of the end of apartheid peacefully. History will judge which was the most significant. My question, some commentators have argued that Gandhi's apparent success with a nonviolent strategy against colonial Britain required for success very specific circumstances and does not represent a universal strategy for revolution or for confront, confronting authoritarian governments. Could we say that Syria was a quite different situation from that in which Gandhi deployed his strategy and that nonviolence was not actually a useful strategy at that time and in those circumstances in Syria? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I agree uh, about Mandela. There are two Mandelas. And I also agree that Syria is, uh, it is different from other uh, places. But still, I mean, we didn't try to force Gandhism in Syria. But we started to develop our own approach of nonviolence, not even in 2011, even before. Maybe my colleagues here, our friends, would, would talk about the, the activism that were there, peaceful activism, even before 2011. And the harshness and the violence that always, it was the only answer we got from the regime. And it was the only supported answer from the from the national community communities toward us. So I agree, but we we, we have our own approach of nonviolence. We start to develop this by many means. By the way, uh, to to have a magazine is one it. it was one of our way to, uh, I mean, to promote nonviolence. This is why we, this is why Nabil started, and Nabil and his friends started Anabaladi. This is why, by the way, only one year later, I mean, 2012, when Nabil was almost arrested, we started another magazine. Mazin and other friends, including myself, we started this Tlana al Hurriya magazine. Uh, but uh, one thing, this, this, uh, the journey of Tlana al Hurriya was very, very tough journey. And every time I, now I'm the, the, the chief editor of this magazine, every time I 
we have up obstacles and we say okay this is it we we'll, we quit here uh, i i remember the words of nabil he said in one phase of his activism he said okay people are picking arms it's all mess here and there it's a chaos but we have a magazine now we have something to do okay whatever happens i will stick to the magazine i will grow up this magazine so this is why we we continue because you know it is a mess out there but we have our own approach we have our own thoughts to deliver thank you uh, thank you for your stories and uh, all the all everything uh, first at the end you repeat and I didn't understand well when you you, you ask uh, Najil to stay and I said I have to do what I have to do in order to do something about the revolution. I have to go with them. But what what was... Uh, he fails. He, he was... What? He, fa he fails seemingly. I mean, the war are, is there. The battles are there. Nabil could not stop people from picking arms and he went to document that or why yes I, oh, oh, what, I, ah, I see, I see. sorry uh, now i understand uh, nabil uh, because people who picked arms who pick arms in, were you know the, the young men of the city and this is one of his key uh, this one thing that may, made him a key person in, the, in Daria. In, in, he knows everybody. He is a friend of everybody. Because he has, he is a man of principle, but still he is a cool guy. He, everybody loves Nabil. Even the people who disagree with Nabil. You, you brought to this court friends of Nabil. I ask you next time to bring other people who are not friends with Nabil. They respect him, they love him, including people who picked arms and start fighting back. So he believes that he has something to, to do with those friends, with those people, to make, him, make them just do something else rather than fighting back. And also, I have, uh, since the beginning, uh, you mentioned about that he went to the university, you know, to be a journalist. But I was uh, <coughs> wondering what kind of classes are given in Damascus University if there, are, there is not press or not Good question. free Thank press you. for that. And what kind of plans Najil has studying journalist? Uh, what kind of journalist he wants to achieve or aspire, aspire? Yes. And these people who work in the official newspapers, what profile do they have? They are, I don't know, if they cannot publish nothing, so they are journalists or what are okay. they? Thank you. I think it's a very smart question and good question. Thank you. The thing is that it, it is a science of journalism, no? You go to the university, you study a science, mere science. So this is what Nabil seeked in, the, in, in university first. The second, it was not very official university. It was, as uh, Hanan has just mentioned, it was a virtual or a parallel university. Pa parallel? So it's kind of uh, teaching the, I think, the Egyptian uh, 
course of uh, media and journalism. So this is how they studied. Secondly, we, the regime forbid journalism, but there was journalism and there was independent journalism. You can check the internet and see other voices than the regime and his allies. You, you, you hear those people's voices. We, you, you, hear, you hear, by the way, Nabil himself. <coughs> his plug is there on the internet. And you can check his plug and see what this man, what, what kind of journalism he was doing. By the way, the slogan of <coughs> yesterday, one of the judges said, we don't know, we, we don't want martyrs. The slogan of Nabil's blog is, uh, We love life and we trying to get uh, to reach it. Uh, most famous poet, Arab, Arabic, modern poet. We love life. We love we love life if we are able to eat food stuff. Sorry. We love life and we love to live it. Nabil also worked for uh, some independent uh, websites before the revolution, before 2009 maybe. He was he took some practice, some training and work. I mean, work, work as part-time jobs in some independent uh, websites. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Sama and Nina, for what you have told us. So I want to come back to this whole thing about who is the journalist because we discussed some of it yesterday. And uh, this thing of whether journalism and activism are two separate things, you know, which is often put out. And it's not just in countries like yours, it's in many countries. And uh, somehow journalists who have political convictions or a passion to bring about change in society um, are told by other journalists that you are activists as if it's an inferior position. Yeah, so this is, I, I'm very conscious of this, for instance, in my context. But on the other hand, the principles of journalism that we are taught is that you have to speak truth to power. So if you have a situation as you have in Syria where you have three official papers which only give the official narrative, then the journalists there are stenographers, right? Because they are basically taking down whatever they're told and then reproducing it. So in fact, they are not journalists, but the journalists who have a strong conviction about wanting to change their society and are writing about the real issues are the journalists. And this is my argument, which I have made in other contexts. And I think it applies uh, to the Syrian context. And I'm saying this because I was very interested in the earlier testimony by Yasser Kolani, who talked about how there is a phobia towards journalists, you know? I found that interesting because if the majority of the official journalists, the people who have a card who can prove they're journalists, are actually no better than stenographers because they're just taking down, then how is it that these authorities have de developed this phobia for journalists? So it must mean that there are enough people in the field like Nabil, and you've just said that to us, who were actually doing journalism that should be done. And um, so my question to you is, given this situation which hasn't changed, how do you see the future of journalism as it ought to be? Forget about all this mixing up activism okay. and journalism. Okay. Journalism you, as it ought to be, how do you see its future in Syria? Thank you, ma'am. Uh, just a, a qu very quick mentioning to the journalism and non-journalism stuff. I appreciate 
that journalism is a prof a profession something rather than activism again and rather than policy for Nabil as a journalist and for many of his and our friends we are doing journalism but it's not policy to seek freedom and dignity right this is not policy these are abs absolute values is that true for us i don't understand when you say it is not I mean, policy wait, what, what is the main the main aspect of journalism to stick to the truth no is it journalism to stick to the truth and only the truth to tell the truth we are not allowed to tell the truth there not even that we are forced to tell lies to follow the propaganda of the of the regime you know that every single day in our schools we are forced to chant al baas party slogan to say that to repeat the propagandas of al baas party so when somebody shows up and write an article says okay there is something else he is now poli he, he is talking polis politics now he is talking something not neutral not journalist journalistic so uh, and uh, one more thing i think there is a change of course the price was rather huge and unbearable for us but there is change now everything is there now we should we can show up here and talk about what's going on there in Syria we we used to be the kingdom of silence in Syria now Syria one of the most noisy places in earth but maybe some people do not want to listen so there is a change and I'm, I'm still we lost Nabi we lost many of our journalists friends and colleagues but the future will not it will it will not stay it will not keep like this there will be ch different world hopefully thank you i think you've given us a lot to think about both of you and thank you to maimuna and osama for your thank you. careful thank you. and painful recounting <laughs>